And we're back. We're moving into our second conversation for today. If you're just joining us, we are going to be finding out more about a recent ruling made on a Facebook defamation case what it means for us, and what are the rules for engagement online. We have uh, the attorney that was uh, a part of the case, Steve Pereira, with us. Good morning. Hi, good morning. And welcome. Yes, thank you guys for having me. So, Steve, this is uh, one of the cases that has definitely generated a lot of buzz. Um, yes. Defamation cases actually happen fairly frequently, but defamation on Facebook uh, with this particular ruling is, is what makes it particularly unique, yes. right? So let me just give you a chance to set the backdrop of the case itself for okay. those who don't know. Well, <clears throat> without getting into the, the specific details of what was, was, was placed on, on the Facebook post, um, essentially what it was, it was that the, there was the defendant, the defendant placed a post um, on one of those the famous uh, groups, uh, obviously a lot of people know about the Belize Buy and Sell and, <laughs> and we also know about the Belize Business Review, those type of groups in Facebook. And the individual posted this post on Facebook and it was obviously um, detrimental to the reputation of our client. Mm -hmm. And when asked to remove it, the, the same gentleman posted another post and extended the the what we see is uh, defamatory to our client and then we had no other option but to take it to court um, when an attorney takes a matter like this to court what we do is we ask for an apology we ask for compensation for damages uh, for the reputation done to the to the defendant mm -hmm. and um, and we have the court determine um, whether or not um, it, the words mentioned were defamatory and what to what extent the, the damages, uh, what extent of damages would be sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, but that's essentially the, the gist of what transpired. So Ultimately, the, the mm -hmm. court um, ruled on our behalf, um, agreed that the words were defamatory and held that the defendant failed to substantiate his defense, failed to bring proof to the court mm -hmm. uh, and failed to justify um, the words said. Yeah. So the post was essentially claiming an illegality of the company of your client, a business yes. of your client, and it could not be proven when brought to case, Correct. when brought to court. Exactly, and that's what we're saying. Uh, and, and, and that speaks volumes because while we as a community in Belize, we use it for business, we use it for uh, marketing, we use it for uh, personal um, advertisements, the internet has become one of the primary modes of, of getting out to and reaching the, the, the population in Belize City. Um, politicians also use it and as such we have to be careful about the extent and how we use um, the, the internet and, and Facebook and we have to be careful about what is being said or what we're putting out there. Yeah. Now you mentioned very clearly the fact that the um, post was put in two groups that have a large number of followers. And, and that's one of the things I've been wondering. Does it matter who or where you show the post? Because if I have perhaps a group that this post is only limited to this group, is it still <laughs> something that I am liable for? If yeah. I don't post it in the big buy and sell group, is it still okay for me to say? Good, good question. Actually, um, that, that actually formed a part of the inter determination in this matter. Um, the rule in the ruling, it, the judge particularly referred to the specific uh, group mm -hmm. that it was posted. What the, where you post the, the statement, the filmatory statement, um, determines the extent of the damages that one would suffer. So for example, in some of these groups, if you were to check it, and we did make reference to it, some of these groups have over a hundred thousand members. Um, some may have a far less, and some might be just your personal Facebook um, profile. If it were that you've posted something defamatory on your personal profile, obviously you would have less viewers. Yeah. But if you post it on Belize Buy and Sell or Belize Business Review, it has greater viewers. So if it were that we found that the words were defamatory and it was posted in Belize Buy and Sell, there would be greater damages provided or claimed by mm -hmm. um, a defendant um, for, for those words posted there. But yeah. if it were in your personal, it would obviously be less. So just as a layman Facebook user, so if I want to say, 
all the bad things about Kevin that I think I can't say on TV, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I post it on my personal page with 20 people viewing. Does he still have a case against me? Yes, I'm certain that Kevin would call me and then we would be <laughs> speaking. But yes, um, what, what emanates from this judgment is a clear indication that Facebook is, um, we have it's a tool and we have to be very careful what we use it for. Um, we are not to post anything defamatory about anyone, mm -hmm. any business, any person in their personal capacity, um, because it, there is a line that must be drawn between the right to say something and the, rep the right to have a reputation. And if it is that we cross that line and we, we say something that affects someone's reputation, um, like you, you referred to Kevin, Kevin has that outstanding reputation. If someone says something against him and it goes to his, his and reputation it's and it's not true, then he has a right to defend it and he has a right to file a claim. Yeah. And so um, that's let's important. Let's, let's go back a little because I think that if someone got excited and talked past what the word defamation is. Mm -hmm. um, because there is a, there's a difference between saying something wrong about somebody and saying something defamatory about somebody. Could you make the distinction for us legally between saying something which is inaccurate? Correct. You know, um, and saying something which is defamatory. Okay, well, the, the line again is very thin there though, because saying something wrong about someone can be defamatory. Yes. Because if, if I say something that's wrong, and it affects your reputation, it is defamatory. And so we have to be careful about that. And, and you bring up a good point, and it's, it's good to use the words wrong and right, because if we know that the, that the statement that we are, we're posting says something that's wrong or unjustified, unjustified about someone, we have to be careful because it will have consequences. Um, what, what I think is important as well to bring out at this point is that I find a lot of people and it, I mean, we have been using post, um, Facebook, we have been um, posting um, things on our personal page, we have been posting stuff on Believe Business Review, but a lot of persons are afraid to apologize. And, and, I, and it's, it's, it's quite odd, but I find that whenever, if you were to be sent um, a demand letter by an attorney, and if you were to be asked and, and, to, and it's pointed out to you that your statement said is defamatory and it affects this person's reputation, there's nothing wrong. And I think the people in Belize need to realize that there's nothing wrong about saying, listen, I'm sorry, I apologize, and that's it. Yeah. You'd find that maybe 70% of the time, that's all, it re uh, yeah. that's all that is required for someone to say, all right, fine, I'll, I'll let bygones be bygones. Yeah. But what is known in the media have industry as a retraction of sorts. Yes, a retraction so of sorts. Can I just clarify yeah. though, yes. was this avenue explored before this case went to trial? Did you ask for an apology, a public apology? Yes, indeed. Remember I, when I started the explanation, I, I said that at first what we did before even filing claim is we sent the defendant a letter saying, could you please apologize? Take it down and, and take apologize. It down. Correct. But I, I don't want this to, to go yes. far without making this point, the 30% yes. that you talked about, you said there are 70% people will not go in further, but there's a 30% chance in your yes. calculation that you'll still be sued. Yes. What it will do, it will affect how much money you get back. Correct. So it's, there is an issue there. Yes. What, what I wanted to, to go back, I, I have been very public in terms of being very critical yes. about what defamation is. Good. It's a rich people thing. <laughs> okay. It's a rich people thing. Um, in Kevin's perspective. In my, in, my, in my mind. Well, everybody have a reputation yes. to protect. Yeah. And I wanted you to go the difference between, which is important, there's a difference between libel and slander. As, as you will tell the public, yes. mm -hmm. um, slander is what you say. Correct. And libel is what you write. Right. Correct. Now, for one of them, you actually have to prove that you lost something. Yes. You have to prove that when you said something or wrote something about me, that 50 people are walking in my shop. Correct. For but the other one, just doing it, you're in trouble. Correct. I, I, wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about in terms of the court process mm -hmm. and whether or not it sort of hides um, a lot of things, which, because it's not about whether or not it's true or not, it's whether or not you can prove it in court. Correct? Well, what you prove in court is true. That's, that's, what we, that's our premise, but yes. I think the perspectives are different here because I know, especially because we're in the media and this yes. is really yes. where a lot of 
uh, the defamation cases would have started before Facebook. Correct. Because we weren't all, the, the journalists had a few angles. They had the newspaper, the radio, the, the TV. Mm -hmm. um, now, Facebook makes everyone a publisher. Once yes. you publish a Correct. post, you are a publisher. Correct. And so, where perhaps I can be governed, because I already have the mind of, of someone who works in the media, other people still feel it's as common as an everyday conversation, but it's just not quite the case. Correct. Now, Kevin's argument, if I can kind of get down to the <laughs> crux of it, is that it, it is only benefiting people of means. And, and I want to give you and, an opportunity and, and, to respond and to that's, that. And that's, it's a good question. It's a good point that he, um, Kevin raised, but I must say, I, I must... I'm glad Kevin is right I, here. I'm going to deter <laughs> a little bit because it really isn't. Um, we've had situations that we've had to de deal with where, interestingly enough, some persons were using a, a group in, in, on Facebook mm -hmm. that actually deals with businesses and reputations of businesses. And we actually had a case where someone who had a small meet shop right down the street from his competitor mm -hmm. was using this group to, to, to cast some serious aspersions about the quality of their competitors in an effort to boost their sales and affect the sales of the other. Um, and we, all, we mentioned and we, we sent the, the demand letter, as, as I indicated, mm -hmm. um, in respect to this matter, to the other side, telling them that they are not to continue posting false rumors about the quality of these meat and insects or rodents being around because those things can affect the yeah, small yeah. businessman. Um, and, and so it does affect even this, the, <coughs> the, the, the smaller businesses. Yeah. And so we have to be careful about that. And I find that a lot of the cases that we don't go to court with, a lot of these cases are in respect to the smaller businessman. Yeah. Uh, it, the, the things that people post, in fact, there are shows about these posts now, nowadays because of what's, what's being said. Yeah. And if you read it, if there is, let's say there is a thousand posts a day in some of these groups, I'd say 90% of them are about small business owners, small business shops, small persons yeah. selling um, food on the street, small delivery groups, small um, catering services. And they are, they, they are susceptible, to, susceptible yeah. to being affected by Facebook yeah. posts that we but make this in is, minutes. This is part of what I think, um, and, and, and you know, I hear Kevin's point, mm -hmm. but I also think a part of what happens a lot of times is things happen to us and we limit our own selves. You know, maybe somebody says something about me and I say, oh, well, this is not going anywhere if I do anything about it. I just, woe is me, I'm the victim. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that this will change the empowerment level of people who feel that they've been wronged, justifiably wronged in some way, um, to seek the court system to uh, address the situation? I think it will, uh, and I've already s I've, I've witnessed it myself. Um, mm -hmm. Persons have now um, come to the realization that um, there is an avenue, mm -hmm. there is a redress that one can get. And um, like I said before, these things are always followed by a, a, a letter, a demand letter. And we find that most of the times, person would retract and take down their posts as <coughs> soon as um, they are notified of it. Um, so, but it but it has brought this. Um, this realization to the, the general public yeah. that they're, they're, they do have a reputation and that it can be protected. You know, I, I don't think people fully understand mm -hmm. this defamation law in terms of what's going on. There was a recent post that I saw <laughs> which was extremely defamatory to one of my clients, which was purportedly a US um, release about public police officers who were involved in a, or unmarked in the US um, list, blacklist. Mm. It was reposted by several other people. Yeah. I want you to talk about reposting and yeah. sharing yes. because I don't think people understand yes. that they're looking and they're laughing and they're. Oh, people cut their got shares, Kevin. Mo Moses, <laughs> Moses, in this case, for a lot of regular people, to me, got taken advantage of. You get a chance. Um, $40,000 for somebody who was arguing for. Um, minimum wage just, 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 just a couple of weeks ago is somebody who's advocating for other people. It's not something for himself. Well, it was 30,000. Uh, Plus legal fees. Just to but legal fees. Plus legal fees. Yeah. Legal fees. Yes. yeah. Uh, to you. So it's 40,000 dollars he has to pay. Mm -hmm. For somebody who was just a couple of weeks ago arguing that poor people's minimum wage be increased. Mm -hmm. 
But I wanted you to talk but about. But it doesn't. I I I, I have to say one thing though. Can it's I just say true. one thing there though? Because just just to be absolutely fair, mm -hmm. it it matters not what good anyone does. If we do something wrong, people need to be held accountable. If a priest Correct. who may have saved and blessed yeah. many people <laughs> has committed some form of sexual abuse, you so want them to be held accountable to the sexual abuse. Correct. Yeah. So I do feel what you're saying in terms of, yes, people take on worthy causes, but that doesn't abdicate the responsibility Correct. of following the laws. And a, good person, and a good person can say something that's defamatory and should also be held responsible for and it. Can apologize if and can apologize I mean, if I make an error, I, I will have to do that, exactly. thankfully. Correct. But this is, I this is to, also... Before, I just before we move on, I wanted to speak specifically. And I must share. say, in our case, there's quite possibly that if he had apologized, quite possibly that we would not have gone the lengths that we had to go. Talk about the shares, because... Oh, yes, the shares. Yes, that's, um, that, uh, that's a very good... Um, topic that you brought up. Yes, the republication of information is also defamation and considered as defamation. <laughs> uh, and so if I shared his post, yes, I would be... You too would also be um, f promoting def this defamatory statement and you too would be responsible for the effect of that post. And so we have to be careful about simply posting, posting, posting uh, or sharing the post. Um, because it's a republication and there's a whole, that there's a new um, cause of action that's generated upon you um, sharing that post. In the case at hand that we were dealing with, what Mr. Psalf did was he didn't repost, but he restated what was told to him. But if someone tells you something, you have to be very careful before you restate that. And you have to make sure that that information is correct because you are responsible for, because it's not no longer Mr. Um, the Mr. X saying it. It's now Mr. Kevinata saying it, regardless mm -hmm. of where you got it from. And in the courts, and, and, it's, and it's marked out in this judgment, and it makes it clear, not simply because someone tells you something, you have the freedom to go and re restate it or republish it, because that makes, it, um, that makes you susceptible to being found for I want to go back to the damage. human element of this, though, because we're talking, about, we're talking about a man who is an advocate regular people and we can't throw away the baby with the bath water but whether or not well the human oh, element oh, is in respect on, to the reputation ruined you know not the person ruining oh, the and, reputation and that's exactly so the law is about and that's the exactly. implications of an action of a person correct not so much about the person who, who does says it, it yes and as you said it could be a priest um, but if you say something wrong about Mr. Artis, a priest says something wrong about Mr. Artis, it's not for me to go at the priest and say well or, or say you, it's sad to do it to the priest, or it's sad to do this to the to the to the um, the good person. But let's, let's it's about let's, it's let's, about let's, the statement uh, said and his the protection of his rights. But let me just follow up here because I think one of the things that can come from this, and I think that's that's a, a real fear, yes. is that we then have a censorship. Uh, type. Uh, it, it's the opposite effect of what can happen from a case like this, mm -hmm. where people have used Facebook uh, uh, as their platform. It's their only platform. Yes. Um, what are the to engagement? This changes how anyone, or it should change how people interact online. Yes. But it doesn't mean that you don't say, or Correct. you don't post, or Correct. you just yes. ignore everything that happens around you. Correct. And, and that's very important because these groups, while this one case did, um, situation did occur, these groups are important because it's important for us to put out our views. It's good for us to put out our position or opinions. Mm -hmm. um, the, all of that is fear, and that's important because that's how we, that's how businesses grow, that's how reputations is, reputations are built, um, and that's how the general public uh, becomes aware of the services, the qualities mm -hmm. of services, and all that. So you're you're perfectly fine to do that. However. When doing so, just be sure that what you're saying is true and that you have proof of it. Because that protection also helps you in the future. Mm -hmm. you, you might be the person who needs that protection down the road. Someone might say something about you. And in order to, to safeguard that right to your reputation, you need to also protect and, and, and safeguard the rights of others. Mm -hmm. And you need to protect them. So if it were that I went to a restaurant and I wish to say something about the quality of food, and that's my opinion, that's fine, and, and that's important. I think there, there's a perfect right in doing that. But for me to go and say something that's not that true... That you serve the roach. Exactly. If I say something, that, and I don't have proof of it, 
I mean, if, I have a, if that were true and I have proof that I, that roach was in there, yeah. then yes, you're free to do so. We but you must have that picture and you must have that, that, that time and proof that that's what, that's what the case was. But it's, we it's to a, protect a, persons from, being, um, from using these avenues or using these forums to falsely depreciate we, we, the we reputation example, of um, companies. We had an example last year of where um, a politician who was a radio host, okay. made a comment about a minister. Okay. And he prefaced it by saying, in my opinion. Okay. And in that case, it was a case out of Dhamma Pan. Okay. He was found to, um, that, that, that he was found to be liable, I believe, in, in that case. Okay. Now, I, I wanted to, to go back again to the, the human side. And I wanted to finish my point, because I wasn't able to oh. ask, finish the question to <laughs> you. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> um, is that we're talking about a man here who was just advocating for minimum wage for people, an activist, no different from Giovanni Brackett, mm -hmm. no different from all of these other people, Will Meher, who go to and don't speak necessarily on their own behalf, but they're speaking to represent people who don't have the voice or the platform to do so. Correct. And when these people speak, mm -hmm. it affects quite a few people. But on the other end of the spectrum, you're talking about somebody who's a well-established person, well-established. If I were to go right now and ask the claimant to show me on paper forty thousand dollars worth of loss from what was said, thirty thousand, thirty thousand okay. dollars worth of loss for what was said about him, <laughs> would you agree that he could not prove to me, in terms of on paper, him losing thirty thousand dollars? Well, let me answer. That's a two-part question. Let me answer that as clearly as, as I can. First, remember, regardless of who you are, whether I'm the, the prime minister of this country, whether I am um, an attorney of excellent stature, whether I am the most, I, I have a Nobel Prize, m what I do for a living and how, what my position in society does have nothing to do with whether or not a statement is defamatory. If I, Steve Pereira, um, always bring cases to light, um, take these, um, as you know, we had the pawn shop case, we, 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 we've made some very good um, um, strides in those areas. Regardless of what I've done in the past, if I make a statement that affects anybody in Belize and it's defamatory and it hurts their reputation, I am responsible. Regardless of what I've done in the past, I could save a child's life today, but tomorrow I go say something bad about you, I am responsible for that. The second point that I'd like to make is that the way damages work um, in terms of when a statement is said about someone, it's calculated based on what the, what the court looks at in terms of past judgments, what has been seen in the past, what has been awarded in the past, um, the extent of, of the, the damage to the reputation. And in, in this case, for example, there, there were two claimants. There was a limited liability company, a separate entity, and then there was an individual. And the court took all of those things into consideration. It was two, the, two claimants, um, the and what, what was extremely- It was the same person, just in a different form. Well, Correct. some people say that, but a person. company is separate. I have <laughs> companies, and I am separate than my companies. Um, if someone sues my company, they're not suing me personally. And if someone sues me, they're not suing any of my companies. So for legal purposes and, and for, we must recognize that it's two separate um, entities. But going back to the point that I was trying to raise just now is the court in awarding damages also looks at what is referred to as aggravated damages. Now, aggravated damages is also a, 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 a form of damage used by the court to curtail the abuse of defamatory statements. Remember when I was giving you the example of what transpired? This defendant was given a demand letter saying, please apologize, don't do this again. And he went and did it again. The courts frown on these things because if it were that they don't frown on it, these, these defamatory statements would be pronounced and they would continue and people would just do it willingly. Willingly, <laughs> yes. So um, part, of that, part of that actual judgment 
there was, in terms of calculation of damages, there were the fact that there were two claimants in this case, and there was aggravated damages, meaning that the person went after make being told and make it worse. And that's clearly something that we shouldn't do. But, but the legal case, so process, I want, I, want to, I want to bring yes. it back because yes. our viewers mm -hmm. need to understand Correct. what this means about their Facebook usage. Like, I, I understand mm -hmm. you guys have the legal aspect that you want to discuss, but I think for people at home, we want to know what this means. We want to know what I can say, what I can't say, uh, what if it is done to me, what yes. I can do, and how do I differentiate if Bart just, my, my camera guy here, if he just doesn't like me and says something bad about me, or if he said something that I can take action on. Because it, okay. it's not just about preventing, it's also how I can take, be, be proactive with what's done to me as well. Yes, of course. Well, um, <clears throat> if something is, is, is said about you, Mm -hmm. or written about you and it affects your reputation, then you're free to, to request and ask that person to remove the post mm -hmm. and to apologize. And if they fail to do so, you're free to contact persons like Kevin or myself, <laughs> attorneys, <laughs> to- For free? To, no, well- <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. To, to, to make things right. Yeah. Um, but the court is there to protect our reputation and we all have a reputation to protect. Some have lesser reputation, some have greater reputation, but we still nonetheless have a reputation to protect. So, what, what classifies as, as something wrong to my, uh, whether my reputation has been wronged? Well, it's all about... Not as a public person, but if I were just an everyday citizen. Okay. Well, Kevin brought up a very good point when he mentioned about there are some uh, statements that are strictly defamatory. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I were to say that you are uh, responsible for a particular crime, mm -hmm. that's particularly, that's a straightforward um, statement that affects you and it's defamatory because it suggests mm -hmm. in the eyes of the public that you are a criminal and you've committed a crime and you're, it, mm -hmm. it should be sanctioned by imprisonment. Um, if someone were to say anything of the sort about you, you would have the right to have them uh, remove it and right to be compensated for um, the loss of reputation um, that it has caused to you. As what a public person, yes. as a public person, should you have a bit of a thicker skin? If you listen to the, some of the talk shows in the morning mm -hmm. and you listen to some of yeah. the garbage that comes from the mouths of some of the hosts, mm -hmm. you would think that by now, average Belizean know when somebody is talking nonsense and when, you know, we're not stupid. Correct. And so it shouldn't have been a thing where the bigger person in this picture say, I'm not going out a little guy mm -hmm. who is there talking and take forty thousand dollars for him from him. Well, there's 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 levels there's levels in society. Like for example, a talk show host. If someone were to say that, um, I, speaking about a, a particular uh, situation, and a talk show host says, or even a proponent of justice or what's not, says, I think something is wrong here, and it must be fixed. That is fine, and that's what it is. And that's where your opinion comes in, and that's where your position, and that's how far you can take it. But if you take it a step farther and says, I think something is wrong here, but I think he's, uh, this person is stealing, yeah. that's where you cross the line. Or this person is being paid off. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a line. There, there's so much you can see. And, and, and I hope that this, these type of cases help to guide talk show hosts in the future and it helps to guide um, general, the, the general position of how news is presented and how people perpetuate news on the internet. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, everyone's a news reporter right now because there's <laughs> every day I see a new breaking this or breaking that and a new person saying they're also reporting on news. But it's important for them to, to, to read about these things because unlike uh, Marlene, Marlene is a trained news reporter. She knows all the what's required for responsible journalism. I think others who wish to pursue that but independently on their own on Facebook, they need to recognize that and read about it because it's important. There's, a, there's an issue in terms of a thing called justification and I think it's important for us to talk about it. Yes. Which um, means that basically... It's a defense. It's a defense. Correct. And basically means, if correct me if I'm wrong, is that you have all of these facts. Yes. And based on these facts, it's fair to say that this is the conclusion. It walks like a duck. It talks like a duck. Yes. It's not unfair defamatory for me to say, in my opinion, that's a duck. Correct. Now, in this case, what's important... You use the word facts. I like what, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that right now. Absolutely. Yes. Now, 
in this case, mm -hmm. the, the defendant actually brought the people. It wasn't like he got up one day and decided, you know what, I'm going to say this mm -hmm. about the defendant, I mean about the claimant. Correct. People came to him and gave mm -hmm. him evidence Correct. that he took to court. Yes. As the reason why I said it was, a, was walking like a duck. Mm -hmm. I was talking like a duck because these people told me he was doing that. Correct. And these people came to court and said, I saw it walk like a duck. Correct. I saw it talk like a duck. Mr. Saul said, it is a duck. Correct, correct. And he still but the judge ruled and he still came out the wrong side of that? All right, let me, answer, let me, let me explain that. No, I don't think so. Let me explain to you. And possibility of an appeal? Let me explain to you what, what that means, though. Um, what you should take away from this duck synergy <laughs> that you're putting out. <laughs> if 20 persons that I come across, 20 persons, and they don't like Mr. X or Mr. Atas. If I have 20 people, you have 20 enemies, and they come to me and say, you know what, Mr. Pereira, Kevin is a bad person. And then the next one say, yes, that's true. And the next one say, yes, that's true. And the next one say, yes, that's true. Even if I bring in 20 persons to court that say Mr. Atas is a bad person, that's not, that's proof? not the proof. Mm -hmm. The proof is to, I would have to have facts as to why they're saying this so and looking. proof it's not about simply but saying this is, this or repeating goes back what again. they say and this is where i tell came. you facebook users need to realize they're publishers it's similar to the media you have to check your sources correct the sources exactly. can say whatever they but can our say. responsibility but, but the, is to fact check but i want to move away from the but, specific case because what this does is whether you like the ruling or not, Kevin, very clearly no, what you're saying no, no. is that it sets a precedent yes. for, and what does that mean? It means that everyone uh, using Facebook, using these groups, must be careful about what they share, repost, and what they state on these forums. And they must fact check. They must ensure that what they say is true and correct and that they have proof of what is being said on there. Mm -hmm. And not to simply repeat things that persons say simply because you don't like this person or because you have you you've had a bad experience with this person and and you wish to contribute to the effects of this person's the reputation evidence, you evidence, have to be very careful about what you say so brought to court because I, I don't want it to be a false analogy in yes. terms of the saying that i don't like someone and someone is bad uh, but if i come to court and i bring 20 people that says listen steve slapped me uh -huh. steve punched me steve kicked me uh -huh. and i come and say steve is a bad person then it's a different thing in this case in particular. Uh -huh. Because all cases are specific to themselves. Correct. So in this case, didn't Mr. Solve bring persons who had an experience well, with the claimant? Well, yes, but it's, about ex it's not only about experience though. Remember, these persons had an experience and they made specific allegations. And it is their specific allegations that need to be proved. Yeah. And, and that's where they fail because they didn't have any proof about what was being said. And if you're, the, 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 the analogy that you use, if it were that it was a situation that someone slapped someone and 20 persons said they saw it, mm -hmm. that's fine. But that's not the case here. That's proof. That's exactly, yeah, that's, that's proof. proof. That's and you know that Correct. as a lawyer. That's Correct. That's that's <laughs> In this case, they had different people saying different issues, different little issues but about different documents and different things, but none of these documents that they spoke about in their particular case was uh, was uh, available or brought to court or were even before the court. Had they had the facts, had it they would had have been facts. a different scenario. Correct. But yeah. as I said, like or not like the case, it has been, this is the ruling that came, come, came out and it's important for us to understand in terms of our own usage. Um, yes. Just in, in, in closing, I think, uh, what do you think is perhaps the most, is the standout um, portion of the ruling that, that you feel people need to know? The, there's, there's two um, very important uh, points that must stand out. First, always fact check what you're posting on Facebook. Second, if you do something wrong, if you find that you've posted something wrong and you find that it does affect someone, feel free to apologize and make things right. Sometimes that solves the matter right there and then and there's no need to go ahead. Mm -hmm. But we need to as human beings and as um, persons in society, we have to face up and apologize where, where we should. Can I have a final you. question, which yes. is that, don't you feel that this will create a scenario where you have a lot of fake user accounts? Because people will now say, okay, well, I don't want Mr. Pereira, sue me. I don't have 40,000, 
So therefore, I'll create um, a, a fake Facebook account. We already see where one public official had posted something and it wasn't. I like. Easy to find a fake account. Here. I like your question because the 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 point of that though. They, they, they already exist. These fake, this, mm -hmm. the fake Facebook Profile users also. already exist. Mm -hmm. the, but what we find with fake Facebook users, they don't have a following mm -hmm. because they're fake. Persons' reputations are greatly affected when persons' uh, stature or a person who has his name listed say something, and that's where it even it affects them greater. Mm -hmm. But fake profiles. So, like in buy and sell, you have some fake profile in buy and sell. Correct. And you put out something there, then it might be it, it, it does pose challenges. But I don't think that's where um, we're going with it, and that yeah. already exists. But yeah. I, and IT professionals can actually track that. It, it's not as yeah. complicated as you think. But right. I, I do want to say uh, just one one final thing here because I think it is just a responsibility issue. Um, I, I've been thinking about this when you do a post on TripAdvisor, for example. I yes. have to consent that I am legitimately a person Correct. who took that flight, who stayed yes. at that hotel, who did that experience, or who ate at that restaurant because I am responsible for <laughs> what I say. Exactly. So it is something globally, I think it's just perhaps that Facebook will have to catch up at some point as well to recognize that. But thank you for coming in and uh, thank you. sharing this information. All right. We're gonna go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we'll have a wrap up, so stay tuned.